She was an artist's model, posing for painters and sculptors. Among them was Edgar Degas. Did she know, as she posed in his studio, that, thanks to him, she would die less completely than the other girls? Stupid question, as though the work counted for more than the life. It would have been no feather in her cap to know that, a century after her death, people would still be buzzing around her in the high-ceilinged halls of museums, just as the fine gentlemen in the foyer of the Paris Opera did that she would still be examined up and down and from all sides, just as she was in the seamy dyes when, where she may have sold her body on orders from her mother, her frail body, now turned to bronze. But maybe it did make a difference. Maybe she did think about it sometimes. Who can say? Surely she had heard how the Mona Lisa was taken to safety during the Franco-Prussian War, how it was returned to the Louvre after France's defeat, how everyone in Paris was visiting it admiringly and buying it in reproduction, thanks to the new reprographic techniques. When she posed for her employ for hours on end, growing tired in what was supposedly a rest position, one leg forward, hands clasped behind her back, silent. Did she consider that Monsieur Degas had enough talent to make her famous too? That her little walk and roll would one day make her a star? Did she imagine such a future for herself? A fame that the ballet world would never grant her. It's possible. After all, Little girls do have their dreams.